Can I get into my Smurf, Smurf account? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Alex, you just get in there then. 2889 is a lobby code. Lurking kick-ass, guys. No worries, Sean. We'll be uh, hosting this one live. I've, I've got my Observer stuff set up. Um, so as soon as the match starts, the Observing starts. So let's see how it goes. So. Okay, Alex is in. Are you guys are good to go? I've never played multiplayer with it, only ladder. Come on, man. <laughs> Gaming expert says I'm going to mute this thing. That's good. Yeah, I should have some delay. But... Uh, it's good if you don't want to stream snipe, that's good. Yeah, can you put a password on the screen? Um, no, it's 2889, but we'll we'll do that for the next one, yeah? I think you're good to go. I'm only spectating, yes. So I'm currently spritz, but we, what we've got going on is we've got four players, except for Alex. Alex has played some CNC before with us. Not a gaming expert has played some Red Alert uh, in team uh, games, I believe. And Cruel and, and Henki or Milos have never played this before. So I'm gonna show you guys how that goes because I'll be the observer and just cast this whole game, okay? And then afterwards I'll participate in the games and we do other matchups, yeah? Sheenery, or Schnee Henry, 82, hi, are there any playable co-op missions? There is actually some co-op missions going on um, in the um, user-made missions, actually. Uh, but the, the real co-op is, um, real co-op campaign, you'd have to play Red Alert 3, for example. Alex has blocked me from quick wins in the past, so I want to see him play. Okay, cool. So I'm going to get out of my um, 1995 mode. And my overview starts in 30 seconds, so bear with me. So it, does, it doesn't allow sniping by observers. And here we go. All right, so here we are. So we have got, let's see. Uh, what are we talking about? We've got not a gaming expert here at the 10 o'clock. We've got Henke, the Orange Army, at the... Um, at the 2 o'clock, we've got Cruel at uh, 5 o'clock, and then we've got another gaming expert here. Or Alex, actually, at 7 o'clock. Let me just very quickly change my crazy-ass mouse cursor back to what it should be. Here. So what we see here is we see different people. We've got some starting units going on, which is usually um, usually we don't. But we, this, this map is really made for, for a four-player free-for-all. So what we see is we see um, Cruel going for the refinery first. We've got uh, Milos here also going refinery first. And the same actually for everybody. Everybody's going refinery first. So they're skipping the barracks and the first the first part of the build queue. The key thing here is that you really, um, you really need to get your economy up here. That's the name of the game in this one. Economy is key because there's so much Tiberium. You can really get away with that in the beginning. Uh, plus, infantry cannot really scout you because they just die through Tiberium. So we've got, let's see, what do we have here? We have um, not a gaming expert here on GDI. Then we've got uh, Alex on Nod. We've got Cruel on Nod. And we've got uh, Milos here on GDI again. Rocketing minigunners on tip to clear path. Yeah, you can do that if you want to, yeah. So Cruel's got his barracks up. Then let's see, Henke uh, here. Milos is actually going radar first. Uh, so he wants to see what's going on. And he's scouting with his Humvees. Then we've got here, not a gaming expert, getting his barracks up after the second refinery and power. And Alex is still stuck on the second refinery. I think he's probably building the third. GDI top first is not bottom, indeed. So I see um, Cruel has actually scouted out Henke's base. With a lone rifleman made it across the Tiberium. In the meantime... Let's see, we've got some rocket troopers coming in here from not a gaming expert, just as some air defense, I'm guessing. Actually, Alex went for the airstrip right away. Alex has learned from previous streams, that's correct. So Alex is directly going for some uh, ground support in the shape of buggies. You can see that he's uh, continuously sending in the planes all the time. Of course, buggies are only 300, and with his uh, economy of 3,000, he can still uh, he can definitely build up quite the force here. Um, then in the meantime, what do we have going on? We've got another gaming expert actually spreading his rocket troopers across his base. And we've got Henke here currently. I don't know exactly what he's doing, but I'm guessing he's building some big buildings here. Not a gaming expert is thinking that he's playing versus Yab. Exactly. He's expecting MIGs. Um, hey, CC Hyper, you're just in time for the multiplayer. And a interesting side note, what we're running now, CC Hyper, is we have a couple of players who've never played Tarbin Dawn online before versus anyone else. And they're playing now. So, um, that's what's going on. 
So Cruel also is expecting to play against me. That's why he puts all these rocket troopers out there. Uh, we've got multiple cargo planes flying over here. And we see Alex actually out of money, but does have the biggest force on the ground at the moment. Uh, gaming Expert is turtling up with some towers here. And Henke has got a second refinery up. And for some reason, I can't scroll all the way to the left. Weirdly enough, let me just tab in and tab out. Can I do it now? No, I can't. Okay. So here is Alex actually with the scouting operation for the um, the base of Cruel. So here we go. So actually the rocket bike is hanging in there. Cruel's got all the rockets in the world as he usually does. Um, so he is really um, chasing him out of there. But in the meantime, Alex has completely seen Cruel's base right about now. Also, Henke's in coming in with the scout with the Humvee here. While Cruel is cruising through the middle to scout it out. So we've got Henke here. We've got the second power up. Refineries are up. Gaming expert is ramping up the um, ramping up the construction here, like pumping out some medium tanks, and we've got Alex here with enough ground troops to um, to really make to really wreck someone's day here. CC hyper Yab is being mean to me by not letting me play, if only against a bunch of noobs on a tip map. <laughs> yes, yeah, I need to bully you a little bit, sludge. You know how it is. Trying to force your way, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let me just also change the jukebox again here, by the way, because um, I want all this goodness in there. Go. And I want, let's see, what do I want up here? I want Hell March up there. There we go. So in the meantime, let's see what we got here. So Cruel is pumping out the uh, additional harvesters as well. It's a good choice. Just definitely get to, the, uh, to get the economy up. I see Alex's economy seems to have stalled a little, uh, sitting on zero money. Not a gaming expert is also draining his bank account right now, going for the repair bay. And we know what that unlocks for GDI. So Henke King is sitting on the most money right now, uh, building a lot of infantry and reinforcing his base, I think. And Cruel is uh, second economy right now. And they could definitely use a little more, um, a little more harvesters or refineries, I would say. Um, okay. Let's see how we're doing. Okay, so another scout from Henke here, like Milos, and um, yeah, the Humvee got away, but in the end, it's, yeah, it's, it's just oh, it's actually attacking the outpost in the back of the base of Cruel, who might be busy with something else because he's not sending any defenses over there. Oh, there he goes. So he's calling the bikes back to uh, get that done. Thanks, Hyper. I'll get stay hydrated. And Hanyu says, you can see that they don't know the map because they're not building a lot of refs. And that's interesting because you see, that's why I wanted to have newer players in here. Um, because... You, yeah, like if we play, like the games we play before usually have like, like standard strats where you go for a lot of refineries and big masses of, of buggies or bikes or tanks or whatever, Humvees. Here you see people taking quite a careful approach and actually staying in their base. Um, indeed, yeah, hydrate, yeah. yeah exactly, crazy nut. 15 to 20 refs is possible, yeah. Like Sean says, air attacks would be super effective on this map as long as you've scouted it out. Um, also, harvester harassment is a real thing in this one. We see another gaming expert actually pushing up the field with some medium tanks, trying, trying to mark his territory. Alex knows the map the best out of this group, that's correct. Alex got the most uh, refineries up here. And uh, we see him like building a variety of troops actually, so he's building bikes, buggies and tanks. So he's really um, going around and making a balanced force, I would say. Um, in the meantime, I see all economies are stalling a little. So we see Cruel actually being the top economy right now with his um, three harvesters pumping out the, the third refinery here in the tip field, which is a good move. Well, Alex already has three and we see no, um, Milos here with uh, with two and a war factory getting his advanced guard towers up and building some sandbags as well. We see uh, not a gaming expert rolling the first mammoth tank off the belts right here. So he's uh, he's gearing up for the bad, some badass warfare. Uh, Mammoth tanks on the field. All right, so let's see. Cruel's got five harvesters going around, six harvesters going around. So he's definitely like in it for the long run here. He's got the, uh, I would say, the best preparation for the um, the economy. Uh, I think second place would be Alex with his three refineries. 
he does stick to three harvesters now. He could do it some more, I would say. Maybe this is another harvester coming in. No, more bikes. Okay, well, that's all good. Let's see. Um, not a gaming expert. Actually, quickly checking out the, the north position here, but there's no spawn, so that actually is a nice space to expand the base if you're willing to. And Milos, in the day, indeed, with the sandbag strats from Sludge. I mean, Sludge, the inspiration here, actually inspiring Milos for all these sandbag strats. Um, so, you know, you've, you've inspired someone, Sludge. Congratulations, my dude. That's an Alpha Legion mammoth, but hush hush. Yeah, exactly. Be careful about that. Not a gaming expert has found uh, Milos's base. He's just scouring around, but he heard that noise of the advanced guard tower and the medium tanks. He must be worried. Then, in the meantime, we see actually Alex also using some sandbags here and there. And then we've got Cruel here with the Obelisk of Light, first one up here, but no power to go with it. So he's actually um, currently on low power with just one normal and one advanced power plant is not enough to tank or to lift this guy up. We see some flame tanks coming off the airstrip at Cruel as well, whilst. Let's see, Alex is investing in a lot of troops still, and he's really worried about that backfield landing, it seems like. Uh, sending five flame troops to the back of his base. He has um, played against some of us too often, I would say. We've got not a gaming expert with uh, his, his third mammoth tank rolling off the belts here, and just focusing on the heavy uh, heavy hitters there. Cruel is power blocking himself, Sludge says, what do you mean? Yeah, Alex has researched sandbags and is attempting to use them. Yeah, exactly. Alex is uh, working on the sandbags right here. All right, so uh, let's see, Milos has got a lot of infantry going on. I think Milos uh, actually currently has quite a lot of money. I'm wondering what he wants to spend that on. He's got his third refinery up. Um, well, in the meantime, not a gaming expert is pushing out the mammoths like hotcakes. So he's really gearing up for some big, bigger warfare and checking out Alex's base right now. But he quickly realizes that Alex has enough forces to deal with um, those simple scouts. When you click on the player's name, you can see the vision. No, actually, indeed, like uh, Sludge says, it's only a replay, it's not in observing. Oh, and there goes uh, Alex's strategy of getting a Chinook up. He should have actually taken his heli uh, helicopter off the pad so the Chinook would have spawned on the pad. But now it flew in from off the map right above Alex's base. And Alex is completely ready for any air attack. So he knew what was coming. All right, so... Uh, let's see what else we've got going on so we've got uh, Milo still here finishing off his sandbag strats trying to evade any like APC rushes perhaps uh, welding while building up his own strategy uh, cruel is currently running ahead with his economy to like meeting the 3,000 credits right now because he's got so many officers going around so he knows exactly he's learned from the previous streams as well knowing that he does need to invest high in economy especially now that people are not attacking him early on um, we've got a classic harvester block here, like harvesters vying for position here. Alex has got his base quite well locked down anti-air wise. On the ground, he's got enough vehicles to deal with that. He's, he's not a gaming expert with another scout move. Uh, Henke's harvester going dangerously close to Cruel's base here actually for no reason. This might actually be an opportunity to snipe off one of those harvesters, but I think they're gonna leave. Um, cool has not, might have not seen it. Um, but especially in a game, in this game of economy, it might be wise to quickly swoop in here and get pick up these harvesters while they're here. In the meantime, we've got not a gaming expert on the move and looking for, like looking for blood here. So let's see how that goes. Sludge says, I'm wondering how in depth my comments might be because yeah, I might read them and they might be keeping an eye on chat. Yeah. True. But it will be delayed, I think. Look at that Harvester AI. Yeah, exactly. Going all the way here. And here we've got Henke with the first uh, attack attempt. I don't know where he's headed. Uh, but he's touched on... Um, touched on Cruel's base here. We see actually now uh, problems at Alex's base as not a gaming expert's forces come barreling down here. And he's, he's done with playing around. So we see the first real conflict going on with uh, seven Mammoth tanks versus... Versus whatever Alex has built up. Alex is focusing on the APC with engineers. So actually Henke prepared an, an APC rush. But he might not be focusing on the big threat here right at the front of the door. Milos indeed with the attempted NG APC. Um, so, so we've got the first obelisk up for Alex. But it, would it be too little too late? In the meantime, we see Cruel just um, biding his time. Actually building up a lot of his forces. And really going for a big force of... Um, the rocket troopers and putting the SAMs around his base. 
So, Not a Game Expert is actually pulling off the attack for whatever reason. Focusing on Harvesters right now, so he's trying to cripple Alex's economy. And we got a, sm a small skirmish on the east currently not. No, but it seems maybe Cruel might be pushing for something here. He's got quite the forces ready. If I don't know if he would know what's going on here. Does he actually look for the fight right now, or just, is he just here for um, ground control? I'm not sure. Maybe he'll wait it out. Maybe seeing all these mammoths might have him worried. He's also <laughs> sending everything back, so I think that got him worried. So another gaming expert's actually pulling back. Um, I don't know why, though. And uh, uh, let's see, Alex has all his harvesters bunched up because in, a, in a desperate rescue attempt. I'm thinking. Uh, Krull with the troops to force a fight looked like he was about to engage, but he pulled back. Yeah, exactly. Is it a mistake to let those mammoth tanks breathe? Maybe. Like in the meantime, of course, Alex is pumping out more mammoths as we go, and as we know, giving GDI the time to really obtain that critical mass is dangerous. So let's see what Krull is going to push for now. Krull is looking at perhaps a skirmish in the north here from him. Got his second obelisk up, so ready for some base defense. Like, he's got some good base defenses here, solid. Plus some gun turrets, actually. He's preparing for a fight. Or he's preparing for the fact that they take the fight to them. Yeah, you do need to clear out the space, indeed, Sean, at the front of your base to build more refineries if you can. Also, Krull's harvesters are here locked up waiting. Waiting for a slot, I guess. That's how many RCs he's got going on. So his economy is through the roof. However, Henke and Not A Gaming Expert are pulling ahead in the economy as well. Or they're catching up. While Alex is, of course, still haunted by the fact that he's got his harvesters in his base. They all have econ, but none of them are taking advantage of the 30% built-in reduction of multiple production buildings. That's correct. So here we go. Krul going in for the kill for the first harvester here. Can he pick one off real quick? That's a shame to let go. I would have said take it up. You know, it's not bad to lose one or two bikes over a harvester. I would gladly trade that, but especially when it's so close to death. However, now Milos has to keep an eye on it and manage it for a while. Not a gaming expert is in the meantime still bolstering his forces and just being let alone is a risk, I will tell you. Um, Blind Archie says, come on guys, we need to see some action, yeah. But this is the thing, this is a very different game from last time. And if you've just joined, this is actually live. Um, so we are watching four relatively new players. I won't say completely new, but relatively new. Some of them have never played online before. Play against each other in a free-for-all. Um, so here we see Krul actually going in for the kill. Can he, he measures it up and says, I can take those seven medium tanks. And there he goes. He definitely has the forces to do it. So he's going to go in for the kill here for the jugular, perhaps, if he pushes it on. He should get his, the tanks in the back actually um, ready to go. Henke in trouble here. He's getting his Orcas actually to quickly take out some of the stuff with the recon bikes. Also make short work of the Orcas. Would this be the moment where Orange is actually biting the dust? Does Krul have enough to keep pushing? In the meantime, we see another gaming expert getting ready here. Staging his attack. Now is the question. It seems to be the power is offline for Henke and his advanced guard towers are not firing. Um, so if Krul can keep the power low, that might be the chance. The more buildings he destroys, the more chance... If he destroys this one, maybe that one will come online. What will he do here? What is his target priority? He's gonna go for the Orca here, maybe. He's got the advanced guard tower, no. Still low, still low power for Milos. Uh, he might just be able to push right through here and actually take down the whole orange base if he just pushes everything in. In the meantime, Mammoth tanks have taken out Alex's obelisk and they took maybe some damage or maybe a loss here or there but they're actually they're pretty capable of dealing with this so um, it's a nice red army indeed so actually Krul is pulling back for reasons unknown he could have just pushed through the whole base right now uh, on the west yeah giving Milo space to breathe yeah exactly Red Army is a people's army. <laughs> I just broke my keyboard wrist pad trying to clean it. Whoops, CC Hyper. Man, finish me off, lol. Okay, Milos is asking for the <laughs> asking for the kill. Cruel uh, is just leaving leaving him hanging here on a thread. I think the, the thing Cruel might be most worried about is actually another force coming in to pick up his base, uh, which is what we've seen um, what we've seen a couple of times on these streams is that when. Um, when one force takes out the other, a third force swoops in and takes the base. So I think that's what Krul is truly worried about, is that if he loses if he loses 
too much forces in this attrition to orange, he might not be able to come back for it if not a gaming expert pushes all the mammoth tanks into the base. So let's see how that goes. I haven't seen any super weapons go up yet. Did we did we turn super weapons off? I haven't seen any advanced comm centers or temples yet, so that would be fun actually to see how that would go. Not letting any harvesters pass without a toll. Yeah, exactly. Not a gaming expert with a savage contained. Yeah, he's really, really keeping Alex really close to the base. So all these mammoths are just ready to rock. Now, this might get interesting right here. Let's see if not a gaming expert will engage. Might Cruel be making... Would he be going to the north? No, I think he has spotted it. And not a gaming expert actually pulling back the mammoth tanks. We see another extra going up for higher build speeds here for Cruel here and making sure that he can um, deliver his forces right to the front line as soon as he set that to primary building. There we go. In the meantime, let's see. Is he skirting too close to that? Obelisk here might get, sh get a shot off. I'm not sure. So Milos, is he getting back in the game? Not yet. Milos has taken a big blow. So now actually Cruel is sending in the recon bikes to finish off the harvester here. Classic tactic indeed of harassment by Nod. Taking out those harvesters is definitely critical if you want to win this in the long game. Milos has his power back up, so that might indeed be a risk. It was a mistake to let that happen. Yeah, why are you running the comp? Like, you, you don't have to run the comp. It's, it's a welcome addition, Slow, but don't um, hurt yourself, you know, don't worry about it. It's a welcome addition. Nice game so far. I would, I would have you join if I didn't have to go. Maybe I'll check it next time. Yeah, sounds good, LeJohn. Like, this is also a nice environment for newer players to actually play. I think that's a, a good opportunity here. Urex says, you're on my phone when I'm making dinner. <laughs> All right. Good luck with the cooking, uh, Urex. So we got a repair bay already. We had that there already. So in the meantime, Cool has a lot of money, but he's not using it right now. I don't know what he's building. His, his economy is going up through the roof. Um, and everybody's just taking their time, actually. But the thing is, if you let other people build up, that might be uh, might be a, a risk later in the game, especially with all those um, all those mammoths. Alex is poking out, but here comes not an expert to squash the ambitions. Yeah, exactly. Not an expert swooping in to make sure that Alex gets back into his cage. And currently taking the losses from the obelisk, even though he could easily have taken it out, I think. These mammoths are enough to steamroll the base, I think. But now we've got a third obelisk going up and it's going to become harder and harder for not a gaming expert to actually pull that off. In the meantime, Cruel is still skirting north of the base. Uh, we see some more Orcas coming back in for Milos. Um, Alright, so Milos is still hanging in there it seems. Cruel is just biding his time. Um, not sure waiting for what while alex is turtling like crazy building his uh, having his third obelisk up and uh, maybe go for a fourth in the meantime he's getting some money still so actually not a gaming expert and cruel are letting the other players breathe it feels like um yeah 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 so what's happening here? Yeah, a few shots on Cruel's harvesters, but nothing to be worried about. I see a lot, a big spam of light tanks coming from Cruel's side here, like pumping them out like hotcakes as well. In the meantime, not a gaming expert is again going forward for the kill. Not really sure going back and forth. Currently, because he waited that long, he might actually be in trouble. If a fourth obelisk goes up, he might actually be in serious trouble. Um, indeed, not leaving the Orcas undefended for air attacks is a risk indeed. So this is a good tactic there. Uh, maybe even with the Ion Cannon he should be able to do that, but I don't see anything else going up there. Um, we indeed have some first, some another tech level up by Cruel, which is a, a good choice, I think, going towards the endgame. Another Harvester picked off. And let's see, currently Milos has one Harvester to go, so it's not left, not much left to work with. Well, um, not a gaming expert is running on two, three, four harvesters right now, with Alex on uh, one, two, three, four as well, and Cool just def definitely having the most. Uh, red light tanks look like pimples or boils. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Still screaming more refs in front of my PC. Yeah, everybody's like everybody says you need more refineries, and we see now Cool going in for the final kill here on Milos. I think would be good for him to now completely push through, take out his means production squish the infantry and uh, get rid of the last resistance of the orange army here um, so 
here we go. So that's the last, um, that's the last one. In the meantime, not a gaming expert has actually finally pulled the trigger and is going for Alex's base, sending in everything at once. But he is fighting three obelisks at once, and his orcas just missed the mark because they were set to attack that one. Now they're sent back. So the mammoths, they will for sure push right through this like a hot knife through butter because it is mammoth tanks we're talking about here. Um, in the meantime, let's see, we've got Cruel here going in for the kill. In the meantime, he has enough defenses to at least hold the, hold the guard for a while. We still have one obelisk up here taking off most of the mammoth tanks. There are big losses here. Yeah, so let's see, mammoths, are they, they are wasting their time on the light tanks. They should be focusing on this obelisk right here. There we go. In the meantime, yeah, Cruel is sweeping up. He doesn't have anything. Uh, doesn't he, I think he's not paying attention. Yeah, now there, there he is. There's the attack command. Wiping out the base here. Um, so Milo's light tanks are a faction choice. So one faction has them. The other faction does not. Alex's base is indeed wide open now. And um, I think not a gaming expert will swoop in to finish the job. Which means we will have a brutal standoff between not a gaming expert and Cruel. All right. Yeah, there's nothing. Like, there's a couple of infantry left, but Alex is in a dire situation. Will not be able unless he pulls everything together. But then still, this is a uh, this is a game ender here. Alex will be out for the count together with Milos. In the meantime, what they're doing is I see more orcas going up on the GDI side. Now, of course, this is going to be quite an interesting, uh, quite an interesting development when uh, that hits the base that's gonna be i'm very curious how that's gonna happen because i don't see any end game moves on the other side uh we got one more obelisk actually alex quickly pulling out one more obelisk and start focus firing on the damage tanks very well so he's really like making the most of it here's another opportunity to take another tank out there it is so he's not out for the count alex will fight to the death Yap says you need to play some games with Milos off stream to train him up. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I mean, especially for the Dutch team, like the Dutch group in here is really um, there's a good opportunity to um, to just exchange some Steam codes and just um, uh, hang out together and play some more games. So the people who just just joined, we are actually currently watching live a game between four relatively new CNC players. So this is like a controlled environment where they um, where they can test their skills and actually play their first games online so that's um i'm actually very much enjoying this so we currently see orange completely being wiped out uh, by cruel by nod here on the bottom right with full silos by the way let me remind you he's actually got so much money going on he doesn't even know how to spend it in the meantime not a gaming expert is trying to push out as much as he can and going back to repair his mammoth tanks while leaving alex alive um that cost him another cost him another obelisk and he might be hanging in there but i think this will be the execution force that can take out the rest of the base selling off selling off maybe there will be another obelisk Sque like squeezed out but i'm not sure lunak is shouting at his computer saying more airfields more war factors you need to decrease that um you need to decrease that um build time in the meantime cruel is actually going on the expected or maybe not i was i was thinking he was going on the expected scout for the base he's also like scouring the sides of alex of not alex of not a gaming experts base here and he doesn't realize the bikes can actually take out the orcas no problem here um but he just flee them back for no reason maybe not a gaming expert can pull them back in time before oh there we go okay that's it Cruel should win this easy. Well, Cruel definitely has the forces on the ground, so let's see how he pulls it off. Where um, not a gaming expert has the quality, Cruel has the quantity, so it's going to be a very interesting standoff here. Um, time is running out. It's a nuclear device, indeed. <laughs> Milos had the perfect plan. I see Cruel pumping out some more refineries here. Good job. Your other harvesters are not doing anything, so your tanks are definitely in the way. Everything's repaired up and good to go. The only thing, the thing that Cruel really needs is eyes on this base. I don't think he has this scouted out yet. Alex coming in with another obelisk and fighting to the last drop. He will not give up that easily. Um, yeah, Cruel is a clear leader of the pack here. With uh, Again, because he invested highly in economy in the beginning. He's currently like way, way ahead in economy at three and a half thousand credits. While um, not a gaming expert and Alex are sitting on zero. Um... So let's see, and in the meantime, indeed, the clock is ticking for this one, for everybody in chat. Um, this is gonna go down. So, 
you know, the other players might really be in trouble very soon. Especially with everything densely packed together, it might really go very fast if um, if um, it can be if the red army can orchestrate that perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, Alex send it out to the Tiberium again. I hope he aims for the base, not for the tanks. That's what I'm hoping too, and I am expecting that. Knowing him, I think he will make the right decision here. Um, but let's see, because I don't see for the development from not a gaming expert because he just doesn't have the money he's got two refinery or two no three harvesters going in and out which is not enough right now um so let's see we've still got alex here hanging on a thread and actually maybe he's still not able to unload his harvester i didn't see that if it worked or not but um in the meantime cruel should be able to really push this push this through um a really heavy fight yeah it's gonna be really crazy now we see actually cool pushing in with the recon bikes here like trying to scout out some more of the field i think and actually quickly go maybe he would go for that harvester no he does not would have been an interesting choice but this is his opportunity to scout and we all know why he's doing that so um there he goes he's going for the power in the back but he has marked his target i think he knows where he's going what he's going for this is the pre-work maybe he's ready Maybe he'll actually pull it off and destroy the Conyar. An excellent snipe right there. No more construction capability for the gaming expert. Now he's going for the power. Exactly. Thank you. Um, power not down yet, but actually, um, Cruel did take out the Conyar. So every building that not a gaming expert is losing is now uh, a very heavy cut price to pay. If anyone wants to teach me how to play, I might do something next time. Is uh, what Milo says. Yeah. Thanks, Blind. Yeah. So indeed, what Hanyu said, um, no, was that? Yeah, Hanyu said you should, yeah, you should go to the, the back of the base and destroy the tree. You can move in. Here we go. This is the standoff we were waiting for. So we've got Cruels, all Cruels light tanks, doing a pincer maneuver on these mammoths here, quickly realizing they're outnumbered. They're pulling back as quick as they can. Well, in the meantime, Cruel has more tanks coming off the uh, assembly line. Um, thanks for checking in, Milos. It was uh, really cool that you played. I hope you can play again next time, okay? Maybe Thursday? Here we go. So this is actually all the light tanks taking out all not a gaming experts mammoth tanks. And this is usually the reason why you don't see them in... Uh, yeah, Alex is helping Cruel with all the infantry here doing a really great job. Even though Cruel loses a lot of light tanks, he still has so much, so many units to go with. Um, gaming experts selling off some of his um, helipads just to get that done would or would the nuke already be ready that might be the finishing blow here i don't know yeah alex goes in with a sneak move for revenge exactly so we see here crew going in for the last kills on the uh, the mammoth tanks which is the last kind of resistance that alex could, or the, not a gaming expert can give him even though he lost a lot of light tanks but still mammoth tanks cannot keep up with the volume of fire uh, by all the light tanks and this is the moment where cool can really go in for the kill if he would just send the, the second wave taking out the last harvesters and that means not a gaming expert is really on his back waiting for it all to be over one last mammoth tank churned out but too little too late there he goes there he goes so now cool is mopping up uh, not a gaming expert's base Oh my goodness, here he goes. Okay, so what do we have left? We've got Alex here left. Actually, another gaming expert still being angry at Alex and actually firing his orcas at the um, the power plant while 30 red tanks are barreling down his base. And that's the end of not a gaming expert. So now we've only got the last stand of Alex left. And I'm wondering, is Cruel going to pull that trigger? No, he's not. I don't think he gets the chance. Does he get the chance? Will he pull the trigger? Will he pull the trigger? Nod will definitely take the victory here. Sending in all the last stuff in there. Will he pull the trigger on that nuke? This has been uh, up here for a while. So I'm expecting it to uh, to land anytime soon. Which can definitely end Alex's day. Throw in the towel, he says. Yeah. No, Alex, Alex will never throw in the towel. He will fight till the bitter end. <laughs> so that's what I said. I'm wondering if... Uh, Cruel will pull the trigger on the nuke or if he just scouts this out and says okay that's everything left I think Cruel might be surprised here thinking oh is that everything is left he might not have scouted this base out at the beginning 
And now he just goes in for the kill. Or he's pulling it back. No, he's not. If I would have the nuke ready, I would just pull back. And he forgot to nuke. Okay, cool. So we, we were all waiting on the edge of our seat for you to pull that trigger, but you didn't. <laughs> I was so tense. <laughs> Alex says that ref cut me. Yeah, I know. Like this. <laughs> oh, man. GG Cruel. Well done, my friend. Good job for your first online Battle game, man. Control terminated. So there we go. Cruel has... You can see that he's like head and shoulders above the rest of the competition on his economy because he's got, well, over 100,000 credits collected, which is um, almost as much as the other three players combined. So you can really see that difference here in building for the economy in the beginning. All right. That was cool. All right. So how many people do we have to play? Because other, we can switch to Red Alerts and play eight players. If So just... Hands up in chat 